Have mercy, Sid, ye longest of beards. Anonymous, Poema de Mio Sid. Hello and welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. Chapter 32 evolves in several phases. Don Quixote's response to the chaplain, the humiliation experienced by Don Quixote when the Duke's servants wash his beard, a discussion of Dulcinea's attributes and her enchanted state, and a concluding farce when the servants attempt to wash Sancho's beard. The focus on beards parallels the focus on social tensions because taking hold because taking hold of a man's beard was a serious offense in the medieval and early modern periods. But the intervening focus on Dulcinea suggests that beards are also phallic symbols of masculine potency, as per Freud. Don Quixote's response to the chaplain recalls his response to the canon of Toledo in part one. He claims to be in a kind of battle with the ecclesiastic, from whom one might have expected sound advice before vulgar vituperations, and he accuses him of having overstepped his bounds, far beyond the limits of a proper reprimand. Don Quixote hints that his own profession is nobler than that of the cleric. By chance, is it a futile undertaking or time ill spent to wander the world not seeking its riches, but rather the asperous means by which the virtuous rise to the seat of immortality? As he did in his speech on arms and letters, Don Quixote contrasts his decision to follow the harsher path in life, the narrow path of knight errantry, with the softer lifestyle of clerics. He even claims that his love for Dulcinea is above reproach. I am a lover, if only because it is obligatory that knights errant be so. And being so, I am not like carnally inclined lovers, but I am of the platonic continent variety. Finally, Don Quixote claims moral superiority. My intentions I always direct towards virtuous ends. Did you know? In the poem of the Cid, the beard of the protagonist becomes a synecdoche for himself. Like the book burning episode, the adventure of the dead body and Don Quixote's penance in the Sierra Morena in part one, this passage indicates Cervantes' objection to religious orthodoxy. Nevertheless, notice that when Sancho endorses his master's response to the ecclesiastic, he highlights his own self-interest and desire for political power. God willing, and may both he and I live long, such that he'll not lack empires to command, nor I isles to govern. This is the darker side of chivalric fantasy, which a cleric might rightly criticize, and underscoring the conflict between the cleric and Don Quixote, now the duke fulfills Sancho's deepest desire. I grant you the governorship of one of the many that I have, and one of no small caliber. Either way we read it, this is a climax in the overall narrative. Don Quixote even orders Sancho to kiss the Duke's feet. Now the indignant ecclesiastic departs. But is his impertinent collar really so off the mark? Quixotic Mission How does Don Quixote describe the road of knight errantry? A. Like a suspension bridge B. Like a rocky hill C. Like a narrow path Correct answer C. Like a narrow path Don Quixote then reflects on the exchange with the cleric, concluding that he has not been offended. The Duke agrees. Just as women cannot offer insults, so ecclesiastics cannot offer insults. To say the least, for nobles to treat a representative of the church in this fashion would have been problematic during the Counter-Reformation. Finally, Don Quixote takes the secular religious conflict to yet another level by marveling at his own restraint, hypothesizing that if the cleric had offended Amadis or some other knight errants, I am certain it would not have gone well for his grace. And Sancho echoes the point, calling the cleric a little man, a hacking they would have given him, which would have opened him up from top to bottom like a pomegranate, or else a very ripe melon. This is brutal irreverence. That's all for now. Find out what happens with our characters in our next discussion of this fascinating text. Once again, Cervantes is counterculture. Whoa, 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 wait. This is my space. Once again, Cervantes is countercultural with respect to his time by advancing feminist ideas. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To enroll in our course, click here. Also, please follow us on our social media.